In the last video, we looked at how to populate this dropdown in order to have the information from our uh, database in the dropdown to choose from. But this, if we look at it now, nothing, nothing happens. If I change these items, the quantity or the product, the price isn't updated. And so now what we want to be able to do is to respond to these changes in the dropdowns uh, in a way that causes things to change on, on our screen for us. So we're going to learn about a new event type, and uh, that's called the change event. And so we want to write event handlers for both of these drop-down menus. And so let's go ahead and do that now. So we're going to write on event, just like we do uh, on all of the buttons that we've dealt with so far. And what I want to respond to is this product um, drop-down first. So I call that product drop-down, so product DB. And the response I want to make is to the change event, not to a click. I don't care if we click the drop-down. I want to know if we change the product that's chosen. So we're going to respond to that. And what I want to do is change the price to match the product and the quantity. So let's write a function to do that. Function, event. All right, now I've got to do some thinking. <clears throat> I need to know which price goes with this product that's chosen. So that price information is stored back in my products table. It's in my unit price portion of the products table. And so I can see that a Snickers, for instance, costs a dollar, or Skittles costs 75 cents. Okay. How do I go about getting that information? Well, again, I'm retrieving information that's going to be a read records um, call, just like I've done previously. So we'll read records. Okay, We want to read from the products table. But now I do have some terms. I don't want to get all the records. I only want to get the price for the thing that's chosen. So how do I specify? that I want to get, if I have a Snickers, for instance, that the price is a dollar. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check to see, give me the product whose name matches what's in the dropdown. I want one record. I want this record, the record where the name of the product is Snickers. Okay. How do I specify that in the code? Well, in these curly braces, I say, give me the product whose name, Okay, and I'm getting name specifically from the database column name, is Snickers. Well, I don't want actual Snickers because maybe I'm going to change that to Skittles, right? Whose name is the text in the product dropdown. How do I get the product dropdown text? Well, we use what's called a get property. Just like there was a set property, there's also a get property. Okay, So I want to get the property of what? The product dropdown. Okay. And that property that I want is what? Well, I have to give, I have to identify the property of the dropdown that I want. Do I want its height or width? No, I don't care about that. It's text color? No, I don't care about any of that. I want to know what's in it as text, right? And so that is right there, text. Okay, so get the text property of the product dropdown. That will be, in this case, Skittles right now. And I can get the product whose name is Skittles. And then I can uh, write a function that will use that record in an appropriate way. Okay. So very similar to what we've done here, right, when we logged in, we've got some terms that we want to make explicit. Okay. What do I want to do with that record? Well, there should only be one of them because there's only one product that has the name Skittles. I want to get its price. So I'm going to create a variable called price. And I'm going to set that price variable equal to the first record that comes back. Remember, record is a list of things. The first one is going to be the zero index. Well, what about that record do I want? I want the price. Well, what did I call the price? I called the price unit price, unit underscore price. So I'm going to say record sub zero, the first record, dot unit underscore price. That's the price of one, but what if I have two or three or four, right? 
I want to, I want this price to reflect that I'm buying more than one of these things, or how many of these things that I'm buying. So I'm going to multiply that by whatever this quantity is. Well, what's the quantity? It's the value in the quantity dropdown. How do I get that? Well, you might think it's a get property, right? Because uh, that's what I did to get this name. It, but it's not because text is generally a string. It's written in quotes, right? I don't want this to be a string. I want this to be a value, the actual number. And so there's actually a separate function for that. Um, it's called get number. And you uh, use that ID of the item you're trying to get to give you the number back. So I'm going to multiply this by get number and then the quantity drop down because that's what I named this drop down earlier. Okay. So now I have the total price and I want this to show up here under price. Okay. How do I do that? Well, I want to set the property of this label. Uh, what did I call that label? I don't remember. I'm going to go back to my design mode here. Click on that label. Uh, looks like I called it label 9. That's a crappy name. But what are you going to do? Let's rename that. Let's call that price label. I want to set the text of this label to be the correct price. So the property that I want to set is the text property. And I want to set the text property of the price label. So I'm going to set property, price label, text. And the text that I want it to contain is not just the price, but also this dollar sign. So I'm going to put the dollar sign in quotes because I literally want a dollar sign. And then I'm going to concatenate onto that uh, the price value that price variable that I just created using the record. Okay. Let's see what happens if we run this. Log in. Place a new order. And now if I modify product, I can see the price updates. If I modify that back, great. A Snickers costs a dollar. Sour Patch Kids were 50 cents. There we go. So looks like this is working as it should. I'd also like it to update when I change the quantity, but it's not. When I change the quantity, nothing's happening. If I change the product again, oh, it is working though, because four times 75 cents is $3, so it is updating it. So a Snickers should be $4, because they're each a dollar, that's working. But I'd like it to update when I change the quantity as well. So let's think about how we do that. Well, the same thing should happen, right? I'm going to create an on event, this time for the quantity dropdown, again on a change, but the function is identical. Like what I want to have happen is exactly the same. So I could cut and paste this and put it right here, but that's duplication of code. What I should do instead is pull this function out, give it a name that's meaningful, like, I don't know, maybe like update price, And then I can use that new function as the response to the event. So rather than write out the function in, this is called an inline function because I'm writing out the function and its body inside this, this call to on event, I can just use the update price function two times save myself some work. So hopefully that makes sense. We're using this function as the response in both cases when I'm changing the price based on the event of the dropdown. Let's run that and see that it's working. Oops.
Now when I change, Skittles changes, that's as before. But if I change the dropdown, the price also responds. Perfect. This uh, shows how we can use the on change event to um, update our user interface and, and reinforces this idea of reading in data from the database and having that sync up with our interface. In the next video, we'll look at how to add uh, database records using uh, the response to this button as well as add some user interface elements.